I hope it doesn't sound like I'm picking on her, because I'm grateful to have her in my life. It's nice to have a partner, someone looking out for you, you look out for them. Like, I did two weeks of shows out of town in December, and when I came home, my wife informed me that she made me an appointment for the gastroenterologist. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar, that's the doctor that sticks the camera up your butt. <laughs> I mean, they do other things, but that's what they're famous for. <laughs> that's probably how they attract people to the field. You like photography? <laughs> and I got a job you're gonna love. <laughs> I didn't ask my wife to set up this appointment. I wasn't sick, I didn't have any symptoms. She just did it because she was looking out for me. So she casually brought it up. She goes, just so you know, I made you an appointment for the gastroenterologist. And I said, just so you know, I won't be going. <laughs> She was like, why wouldn't you go? It's just a consultation. I said, well, it's the principal. I'm an adult. I make my own decisions. Thank you. Anyway, so I'm at the gastroenterologist. <laughs> the doctor starts to describe the procedure. And I said, look, I should probably let you know, I don't really enjoy getting my picture taken. <laughs> I would be open to an ultrasound. I think a lot of men are curious what the jelly on the belly feels like. <laughs> Anyway, the doctor, he didn't think it was funny. <laughs> and I knew it was precautionary, so I agreed. So he went over to his computer and he goes, all right, my next available appointment is in three months. And I was like, three months? This was in December. I didn't know if I wanted this procedure hanging over my head during the holidays. Jim, you want another piece of pie? No, I'm getting a camera up my butt. <laughs> I don't want some team of doctors to be like, wow, this guy loves pie. <laughs> Mary, get out here. He's got a half a pie up there. <laughs> I didn't know what could delay this important procedure, but part of me didn't want to find out. I didn't want the doctor to be like, well, the real delay is finding someone to clean the camera. That takes a <laughs> Turnover in that position's insane. You know, people do it once and they're like, you know what, I'm going back on food stamps. <laughs> then I was thinking, maybe it's the doctor. Maybe he's like, dude, I can only do this procedure once a month. Then I gotta take a week off, sit on the beach, and ask myself why I keep sticking cameras up people's butts. <laughs> I could have been a dentist. <laughs> Again with the dental reference. <laughs> but in February, I had the procedure, and I think every man in here should get a colonoscopy, because I had to. <laughs> it's not an easy decision, because the best news you can find out from getting a camera stuck up your butt is learning you didn't need to have a camera stuck up your butt. <laughs> That's the best news. Yeah, we didn't need to do that. <laughs> we can just chalk that up, one for fun. <laughs> and the day before the procedure, you can't eat anything, and I'm a total pig, so I was terrified. But after I was awake for five hours and I hadn't eaten anything, I wasn't hungry. I was suicidal. <laughs> I was so bored. I was like, what am I supposed to sit here and feel feelings? And then at noon and at 6 p.m., you have to drink this serum that I believe is made by a collaboration of X-Lax and Taco Bell. <laughs> Printed on the side of the serum, it should have just said, drink this in the bathroom. <laughs> Might want to grab a pillow and a book. Because <laughs> I tell you, I've had diarrhea before. <laughs> this is the point where everyone acts like they've never had diarrhea. I don't even know what Jim's talking about to you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the only one who's had diarrhea in a hotel hot tub. Okay. <laughs> like we're at the same hotel. No, I've had diarrhea. I don't want to brag. No, I've had diarrhea, but calling what this serum did to my body diarrhea is an insult to the word diarrhea. My body made noises I didn't know existed. At one point, I thought I stepped on a puppy. I was in the bathroom for hours, for hours, checking email, ignoring phone calls. Because serum or not, you can't answer the phone in the bathroom. Because you can't hide the fact you're in the bathroom because there's an echo. Are, are you in a well? Yes, yes, I'm down here in a well. Just no kids in this well, making sure no kids fell in. But I kept getting this call from the doctor's office, and I thought there might be important information, like someone saying, do not drink the serum. <laughs> so 
so I answered it, and it was just someone confirming the appointment. And I don't know how someone's supposed to sound when they confirm a colonoscopy, but this person was really casual. They're like, hey, how are you? So we're gonna see you tomorrow. What, are we having brunch? I thought I was getting a camera up my butt. She gave me the address. The next morning I went there. It wasn't at a hospital or a clinic. It was at some building. Just picture where you imagine the black market would harvest human organs. <laughs> what am I doing here? And I took an elevator to the basement. There was this huge space with all these makeshift rooms with shower curtains. And I was led into one. There was all this talking. You know when you're nervous and you think you hear things? I thought I heard someone go, I can't believe he's here. <laughs> I want his kidney. And I was terrified. And then eventually an anesthesiologist walked in, he gave me a shot and he goes, I just wanna go through what's gonna happen. Right now I'm giving you some medicine which will knock you out. And when you wake up, you won't remember anything. You okay with that? <laughs> and against every instinct in my body, I just went, okay. <laughs> and the last memory I had is just watching the anesthesiologist leave the room as I heard someone go, I want his spleen. <laughs> And I woke up and I was fine. I mean, I'm pregnant, but I'm fine. <laughs>I was recently given a gift certificate for a massage, which I will never use <laughs> because I am not one of the real housewives of Beverly Hills. I've gotten a massage before, but I just, I find it hard to justify a massage. Like, you know what, you know what I deserve? To have some, someone I don't know rub my body. <laughs> Let's make that happen, people. Because massages are always from strangers. We get massages from strangers because we can't count on the people who love us to touch us. <laughs> right? I mean, it could be your best friend. You see that guy, take a bullet for him. I'm not giving him a massage, I'm no queen. <laughs> my wife, the woman I love, the mother of my children, here's my massage. You good? That's my hands cramping. <laughs> so we pay total strangers. Hey, I know nothing about you. Why don't I take off my clothes and climb on this padded dining room table? <laughs> and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> we know nothing about these people. I don't even ask if they're a masseuse. <laughs> well, you're dressed like an orderly in a mental ward. <laughs> Why don't I get in the most vulnerable position I can think of? <laughs> How about face down in the donut pillow? Does that work for you? Because then I can look at your feet and imagine you're grabbing knives. <laughs> what do we really know about massage therapists? They like to rub strangers for money while they listen to the Avatar soundtrack. <laughs> That's a red flag. Those are the traits of a serial killer. I never know what to say during a massage. Sometimes I'll try and break the ice. I'll be like, hey, you're not allergic to leprosy, are you? <laughs> They never laugh, because they're busy imagining making a suit out of my skin. Because they're murderers. They already put the lotion in the basket. I don't even know what type of massage I'm getting when I get a massage. Like, Do you want a deep tissue, a shiatsu, or a Swedish massage? I'm like, I'll take the blonde. I don't know. <laughs> Because men view massages differently. A woman gets a massage, her friends are like, good for you. A guy gets a massage, you dirty dog! Because <laughs> men sexualize all human interaction. <laughs> it was a therapeutic massage. How therapeutic? <laughs> Nothing happened. Yeah, that's what would tell your wife, huh? <laughs> that's gotta be frustrating for massage therapists, that double meaning. Did you get a massage or a massage? <laughs> no other occupation has to deal with that. Did you get a cavity filled or a cavity filled? <laughs> How many dentistry references is he gonna have? <laughs> For me, a massage is just an hour of awkwardness, right? She, she gets done, she leaves the room, I put on the robe, I step outside, she hands me a glass of water. I was looking at her and go, you're never gonna call me. <laughs> What a charade. I did have one massage therapist. She told me they're allowed to turn people down. I don't know why she told me that. 
It was after a show. Can you imagine getting turned down by a massage therapist? That's rough. Yeah, you couldn't pay me to touch it. Not for all the money on the planet. Oh, I did one of those genetic tests. I was surprised to find out I'm all Asian. You do learn things from those genetic tests. Like, I discovered I wasted a hundred bucks. <laughs> they send you information. Mine just said, dude, you're white. In fact, you're very white. I hope you feel guilty. <laughs> they didn't even break out my nationality. They just highlighted all the British Isles. They're like, you're trash from here. <laughs> Wherever people need sunscreen. <laughs> We expect to learn from these genetic tests like oh my gosh I'm related to my ancestors <laughs> we're only gonna find out bad news you see it in the commercials I thought I was Italian but it ends up my great-grandma was a whore <laughs> so I guess I'm Eastern European <laughs> sometimes people think I'm saying Eastern Europeans are whores and I am no. <laughs> My point is, only good family news is passed along. Like, if your great-grandfather was Abraham Lincoln, you'd already know that. But if your great-grandfather was the town drunk, your grandpa's likely to go, uh, I don't remember. I think he worked in a bar. Chief gutter inspector. I do know I have some Irish ancestry, but apparently the Irish didn't keep great records because, well, draw your own conclusion. <laughs> some tells me they weren't busy sunbathing. <laughs> I'm Irish, but I have blonde hair. Supposedly the only reason the Irish have blonde or red hair is because the Vikings invaded, pillaged, and probably other stuff. <laughs> Those Vikings, the Scandinavians, I don't know if you've been to Sweden, it's like a whole country of Scarlett Johansons. <laughs> if I was in Ireland at that time, I would have been, oh no, some Viking lady's coming to pillage me. I guess I'll hide on this bed covered in rose petals. <laughs> Hopefully she can help me put together that table. They say last names can tell you something. Like if your last name is Cooper, that means you probably had an ancestor who made barrels. If your last name is Cantor, that means somebody along the line was a singer. My last name is Gaffigan, which is Gaelic for highly anxious. <laughs> and when I learned that, all I could feel was highly anxious. <laughs> How anxious do you have to be for people to go, you should go with that as your name. Was that? That's what we call you anyway. It does seem like some last names were chosen to impress, right? You know, someone was like, you know what? I want the ladies to know I'm successful, so I'm gonna go with a last name, Goldman. Goldman. What are you going with? Wiener. I want the ladies to know I like hot dogs. I do enjoy traveling to other countries, seeing how different, but essentially similar we all are. Like, like the UK is not that different from the US. You know, if anything, you go over there and it seems like British people are trying to be different from Americans. They're like, oh, you drive on the right side of the road, then, then we're gonna drive on the left side of the road. <laughs> oh, you call your mother mom, then we're gonna call ours mum. <laughs> oh, you call that a cookie, then we're not going to the dentist. <laughs> I know that's cheap. <laughs> I did notice something when I was over there. You know, British people, they don't say the before hospital. You ever notice that? They're like, hospital? I was feeling knackered, so I went to hospital. Whenever they would do that, I'd say, stop that, that's wrong and weird. Are you trying to sound like a polite caveman? And I had a friend from London, he was like, what makes you think you're doing it properly? And I go, because I'm American and we invented the English language. <laughs> it was a pet peeve of mine, so I did some research. You know why British people don't say the before hospital? Because they're dicks. <laughs> yeah! I know that sounds harsh, but admit 
it. British people always talk to Americans like we just walked into their jewelry store with two full bags of garbage. <laughs> uh, may I help you? <laughs> Are you lost? <laughs> Obviously, I love the Brits, and I would never do those jokes there. <laughs> It's been a crazy year for me, crazy year. I don't know if you know, in April, it was discovered my wife had a brain tumor. I'm not even making this up. It was removed, she's great, everything's good. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't remove it. I, I was in the other room soiling myself, but the tumor is gone, along with my ability to ever win another argument. It's not like I was winning a lot before, but now I'm retired. And luckily, my wife's not the type to bring it up. Well, once she did, she was like, you know, I did have brain surgery. And I couldn't be like, yeah, that was like a month ago. It's time to move on, you know? What about my seasonal allergies? We all have our cross to bear. It was crazy. You know, the, the surgeon told me the tumor was the size of a pear, which is scary, but also confusing. I was like, did he go to med school or a farmer's market? <laughs> but tumors are often compared to fruit. A pear, a lemon, a grapefruit. Interesting fact, worst tumor, grapefruit. Worst fruit, grapefruit. <laughs> when you think about it, a grapefruit looks more like a tumor than a fruit. I almost feel sorry for grapefruit. Yeah, we can't win, yeah? <laughs> We're already the worst fruit, and now we're compared to the worst tumor? Well, at least we help old people poop. <laughs> that is the worst impression of a grapefruit ever. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate that there's another fruit that's much smaller named grape. Because you know there's situations in doctor's offices, we found a tumor, it's the size of a grape. Thank God. I didn't finish. <laughs> Grapefruit. Oh, that's, that's very different. <laughs> it was strange. You know, when, when the doctor told me the tumor was the size of a pear, I thought, wow, I guess doctors are bad at analogies. But I quickly realized they're just dumbing it down for idiots like me. Like, the surgeon looked at me and thought, well, this guy's not gonna understand centimeters. I don't even wanna try and explain circumference. Based on appearance, he doesn't eat fruit, but he's probably seen a pear when he's at the grocery store buying ice cream. I don't know why the surgeon sounds like Andy Rooney. Notice tumors look like fruit. <laughs> By the way, if you don't know who Andy Rooney is, you're a child. <laughs> and if you do know who Andy Rooney is, you should probably eat more grapefruit. <laughs> tumors compared to fruit, they're, they're sometimes they're compared to balls, like a golf ball or a softball. But the surgeon looked at me and thought, I'm gonna stick with food. <laughs> got a better shot of this fat ass understanding. I joke around, but it was scary. We have five children. And there were moments when I was like, oh my gosh, if anything happens to my wife, those five kids are gonna be put up for adoption. Some of these jokes are just for the fathers. Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you wanna see more stand up, I have more stand-up, or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, that's available on my channel. But also, just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.